Que senhor. Welcome to Shoujo and Tell, where we discuss shoujo manga and tell who's hot and who's not, talk about themes, and just generally geek out. Today, August 13th, 2020, we'll be shoujo and telling about volumes 7 through 12 of Fushigi Yugi Genbu Kaiden by Yu Atase. I'm your host, Ashley McDonald, and I'm joined by Caitlin. Hello! Sarah. Hey! And Zara. Hi! Alright. This is a new podcast, so I guess perhaps somebody listens to only the second half and not the first <laughs> half, in which case we have to do introductions <laughs> once again. Uh, so, Caitlin, who are you? Um, I am Caitlin. Uh, that's all you need to know. No. <laughs> I mean, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a writer and editor for Anime Feminist um, and a reviewer for Anime News Network. Those are my main things. And... Long time Fushigi Yugi fan. Just throw that in there. Yeah, I mean, truly very important. Sarah? I'm Sarah Lindsley. I'm a freelance manga letterer for Kodansha, Viz, and Yen Press, and I've been doing this since 2013. You've probably seen my work in Waiting for Spring, Sweat and Soap, and most recently, Fushigi Yugi Byaka Senki. Yeah, I want you to know I'm still, like, both so happy and so sad that on the last podcast you told me there's a secret, like, 14th volume of Waiting for Spring. (laughs) (laughs) Really messing with my podcast plans, but that's fine. (laughs) Um, And Zara. I am a current university student doing honors in Japanese pop culture and translation. Yes. So a future manga translator. That's how I'm going to insert that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dream. That's the dream, exactly. Okay, so this podcast is about the second half of Shigi Yemu Kaiden. So I truly don't advise that you listen to this unless you've read Genbu Kaiden before. Or alternatively, you know the ending. So like, I don't know. What do you care? I don't know. This is fine. You know it from the uh, original of Shigi Yugi. So that's cool. Um, but everybody should buy Yemu Kaiden. It is one of my favorite manga. It is available from Viz Media. As Sarah said, uh, Byaku Senki, which is a basically direct sequel to it, is coming out now, kind of. It's on hiatus. It's weird and awkward. It came- the first volume came out in English recently. Go buy those things or borrow them from a library. Do those exist? It's the apocalypse. I don't know anymore. (laughs) Um, (laughs) It's very confusing. (laughs) Okay. Um, So I do want to do, I'll just give a a blow by blow of major events that happened in the volumes. I will admit that this is partially for all of our own sakes at this point, because we were going to record (laughs) this. Uh we were going to record this a couple of days ago, but uh, <laughs> S- Sarah had some power issues. So we were like, oh, no, we got to gotta reschedule. And now we're like, what's a Genbu Kaiden? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's basically how this goes. I blame um, climate change. I mean, that's <laughs> fair. <laughs> uh, I was partially like, oh, no, it's supposed to thunderstorm today. I hope that doesn't get in my way. <laughs> well, clearly we just need to summon a god and wish yeah. for climate change not happen just like i mean that's i know that's the moral that i got from this story truly <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but uh we started off in volume what, what volume seven <laughs> seven uh soren who is limdo's uh right hand man protector man and takiko have been captured <laughs> by you know all the people who like want limdo dead and stuff like that they're going to be taken to Limdo's dad, who is King Tendon. Um, when they attempt to escape, like, really only Takiko escapes, and Sorin stays, and they try to use Sorin as a way to lure out, you know, Limdo. Um, that backfires because Sorin had given Takiko their, like, secret crazy Tokwa sees. Like, this plan seems very yeah. bad. <laughs> Does anybody ever think about how any, literally any one other person could take that seed and then just like... <laughs> it's a little bit of a a convenience. A little bit of a stretch. <laughs> yes. A little bit of plot convenience, but we'll allow it. Okay, so yes. <laughs> so Takiko took a seed and then uh, her and Limdo are able to reunite and they think he's going to come to Sorin, but Sorin's like, nope, just kidding. I'm going to kill as many of you as possible before I die. 
And, you know, he puts up a valiant effort. Uh, Watase clearly had a lot of fun drawing him fighting people. That's really what happened there. Um, but Limdo is very sad that Sorin has died. Blames himself. Um, the Celestial Warriors and Takiko end up being, like, taken care of by a secret clan that lives in a protected forest. Because this is fantasy and that stuff is fun. <laughs> <laughs> they are primarily taken care of by a girl named Filka who Takiko is obviously very jealous of because she doesn't know things yet. <laughs> the the, the Kodong, how are we saying this? Kudong army. I just mentally convert into Kuto, honestly. Mm, okay. <laughs> I see. Interesting. Fair enough. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> they, well, they're waiting outside because uh, they can't enter the protected forest because they're evil. <laughs> and... Uh, Takiko has been trying to, like, haggle with Haggis, being like, hey, I can find your brother's hag. And he's like, hmm, I don't know about this. <laughs> I just don't know. Um, the clan and the Celestial Warriors decide to have a memorial service for Sorin to help Limdo, uh, you know, deal with his grief. Um, soon after, though, he learns that Takiko will have to die if she summons Genbu because she becomes a sacrifice. And he's like, I don't want that. So he pretends to be a real jerk and not love her <laughs> to drive her back to her own world. Uh, when Takiko gets there, she has to attend the wake of her mother. Uh, and one of her mother's doctors, Oikawa, comes and proposes to her. So like real whiplash right there. That's fine. She's all good. <laughs> uh, Takiko does accept this marriage proposal because, you know, she's trying to be like, uh, Linda doesn't love me anymore. Um but then she ends up getting tuberculosis from her mom. So that's a that's a wrench. <laughs> that's bad. Yep. That'll ruin your day. That'll ruin your day. Oops. That'll ruin your marriage proposals. Um, it's all good. <laughs> so Takiko's like, wait a minute. If I'm going to die, I want to die with the one that I actually loved and goes back into the book. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> When she reunites with the warriors, she tries to hide from them that she's dying, but Hatsui and Inami do find out. Um, they've all been split up as well, so they're all like trying to infiltrate the capital <laughs> and all these things. And that's when we start learning about... It gets very plotty from here. <laughs> it's like... It's not Basara levels of plotty, but, you know, plotty, nonetheless. <laughs> uh... So they go to try to, like, kill or talk to King Temden, whichever one comes first. I don't know. They're trying to figure it out. <laughs> they learn that Temden was actually once very beloved by a lot of people in the kingdom. And lots of people still want him to actually be emperor over his brother, Tegel. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, lots, lots of, like, just lots of political machinations happen. Um, it's revealed that the prophecy to kid that... Uh, Limdo would kill his dad is fake, made up stuff from Tegel, like, of course. Vilka is Tegel's daughter, and her real name is Effin Luca. Is, is that how you would pronounce it? Like, please tell me. <laughs> it's a name. It's a name. Okay, I'm like, this is a poor choice of <laughs> name. Let's go back to Vilka. I'm curious, what? Yeah, what? Exactly. Yeah, what? Uh, no, like, what uh, kind of language are these names supposed to be from? I am also curious. In original Fushigi Yugi, they were, like, sounding, you know, they were Chinese sounding, but, like, here it's, or they are Japanese sounding, depending on the, you know, translation. But here, I don't know. I don't know at all. <laughs> I know. What language family is this? I don't know. It sounds like some some like made up like Gaelic nonsense to me. <laughs> like right, like Haga sounds like it sounds very like almost Scottish. Anyway, yeah. this is a tangent. No, I also have wondered this though because I'm like, all right, we're getting like. This is clearly some made up stuff, but what is this inspired by? Because it's real, like, yeah. <laughs> crazy. Like, Filka sounds Scandinavian to me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 
you know what Watase can do whatever she wants because she did it and she's just like i'm not i'm not yeah i tried to look up if f and luca was like a real you know like name not like you know just like had been used by other people but no the first thing that came up as a hit was uh gambu kaiden wiki so <laughs> i was like okay there's um there's also a bit uh like with all the plot stuff um where um it's like the blue stone identifies um if you're like part of like the Temdan Thames infection. Oh yeah. And I always find that really weird because like a blue stone is like many many like many like jewelries have like blue stones and costumes and things. So like I feel like just like a blue stone by itself is very kind of It's like too like, innocuous, yeah. Yes. Like too many people would be falsely identified. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah, I found that little plot point to be kind of strange because it's like, we should get these bracelets for our love. And like, (laughs) okay, I'm going to wear this all day. And like, oh no, it's a sign of the resistance. There are some some ass pulls. Am I allowed to say ass pulls? Yeah, sure. You can say (laughs) ass pulls. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, there there are definitely some things in here where I'm like, all right, we just had to move this along and Watase does not care. (laughs) Like fine <laughs> uh yeah for sure no yeah i was like it's really weak that it's like oh yeah this bracelet uh now outs them as rebel supporters unintentionally i'm like okay sure <laughs> but yes temden loyalists do manage to kill tegel and restore temden to power um takiko goes to plead with him to not kill limdo while limdo tomite and hatsui are in the underground cavern where teg is and Hega shows up and he's like, I'm not here to kill you, <laughs> Limdo. I'm I'm with my bro now. And also I'm dead because I had the same disease as Temden. And all the star lifestone in the world can't <laughs> save me from this. Um so then him and Tag merge into one fully <laughs> formed man. <laughs> that, that's it. <laughs> I need <Kate. sighs> fantasy. <laughs> yeah, 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 Caitlin. Caitlin loves siblings <laughs> and or, or twins. You love you feel twins. Yeah, mystical twins. Yeah. So great. Yeah. So great. <laughs> Very accurate to my experience. Very accurate to your experience as a twin. Yeah. Yes. My sister and I are magically connected. I mean, do you fuse together? Like, do you do like Steven Universe levels? Like you fuse into a giant woman, you know? Like, <laughs> no, on. but you know, she's pregnant. So it's basically like I am pregnant too, right? <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, don't you feel it? <laughs> Which is weird, by the way. Just, just, it's weird. It's, it's a weird, weird feeling. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Limdo does not kill his dad, but a Tegel supporter does. <laughs> that was so random. Like, like this person coming out, like this Tegel like supporter, just like throwing like a small knife, and then Temdan dying was just so like. It felt like really out of the left field. <laughs> I mean, on one level, it makes sense because yeah, they had just literally spelled out the plot of him like basically betraying his country. <laughs> yeah uh so that part made sense but i was like oh yeah it's it's really weak that it's like oh we swept this room but this dude <laughs> we thought he was dead and we, yeah. i was like all right you know what i have enough suspension of disbelief to buy this one i guess <laughs> more than the bracelets truly <laughs> that's how i feel about it um so limdo becomes emperor and he's like, hey, all this food that you've been hoarding, like, please give that to people who are starving outside right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, and he and Takiko, like, get married, like, whatever, that's fine. <laughs> um, now, obviously, everybody knows that Takiko is dying, like, one way or another, Takiko is basically dying. But they're like, no, we don't want Takiko to sacrifice herself to Genbu. So they try to fight the army uh, by themselves, just using their powers. Um, however, as we said at the beginning of this, climate change is too, too severe. <laughs> and they're like, nope, it's, it's not going to work. A hailstorm basically like destroys the city. Um, so Taki goes like, I- I'm almost dead anyway. I might as well uh, do something good. She wishes for the spring to come. Oh, yeah. And for everything in the land to be healed. Mm-hmm. since So many people are, are suffering. Um, she does not get to make a third wish. <laughs> 
And then, yeah, and then she dies. <laughs> and then the end. Ha- yay! What a happy ending. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean, it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, generally, how do we feel about this ending? There, a lot happens all at once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My overall feeling was rereading it, I was like, I can never remember, yeah, what happens in the last, like, two volumes. And I'm like, you know why I can't remember what happens? Because just, like, a lot happens, and it just can never... Uh... Because everything happens so much. Yeah, everything happens so much, and I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anymore. <laughs> And it, it all, like, happens, like, fairly fast compared to the beginning of the story, I feel. Like, the beginning of the story is, like, okay, yeah, we're, we're chilling uh, a little bit. Each story takes a while. This one is, like, no. We are moving along. <laughs> Reveal stuff. Mm-hmm. Man, I don't know why I cry at the end of series when I know that the main character is going to die. Oh, I cried, too. I'm already, I too. I'm like, I'm already there. I already know what happens, but I'm still like at the end. I'm just like, oh, it was so beautiful. <laughs> Every time. I think I cry harder when I know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's got that like dramatic sort of, you're, you're built up to it. Yeah. Like it's more tragic because you know exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> Uh, and you can like appreciate how it happens more yeah no for sure I cried (laughs) I am a baby I am a sucker for all of these things I'm with you I'm with you there yeah I love the ending I thought it was really sweet I mean I cried and and the fact that she doesn't uh, use her third wish you know like she started off the entire series wanting wanting to bring her mom back to life and I feel like it's just 12 volumes of her dealing with that grief and her getting to a point where she could move on and I guess moving on means she dies but she <laughs> yeah. did eventually accept her mother's death she could have wished to be better Ooh. all right wait a minute mm. okay this is a this is a listener first of all I want to know if Zara cried <laughs> uh I may have cried when I first read it when I was younger but I didn't cry this time around, but it was still pretty sad. Okay. I still had feels. <laughs> as long as you had the feelings. Okay. It's okay. I know Australians don't have emotions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Y'all are real, real hardcore down there, down under, you know? <laughs> we get it. Uh, we did get a bunch of questions from one Twitter user, uh, at Super Snazzy. And the first one actually was, what do you think of Takiko not being able to make her last wish? Caitlin just said she could have wished to get better, which is something that I did not actually even consider. <laughs> so just yeah, yeah. I, that's sort of the big thing is like she didn't get to make her last wish, but she could have wished to be okay again, and that kind of sucks. Well, but wait, does it apply when she's already being being eaten by Gimbu? Like, is it? It's not like isn't this like a genie thing? You can't just wish for more wishes, you know? Like. <laughs> I mean, I mean, she could have wished mm, the mechanics here make it a little ambiguous because like she could have she's strong willed. Like, I think if not for the illness, she probably would have been okay during the summoning ceremony. Um, Like Miyaka was able to to survive it through her strength of will. I think if she had had a chance to wish to like be cured of her tuberculosis she probably would have been okay wow you thought you think she could have fought off like being consumed by a god (laughs) miyaka did yeah miyaka did it (sighs) okay i mean that's true but miyaka was special (laughs) (laughs) she was special uh miyaka got to have a lot of things that like i don't think current watase like wants to give characters anymore <laughs> no watase doesn't do the but it feels right and that's why i'm going to do it sort of plotting so much anymore yeah yeah um okay interesting yeah i didn't consider that she could just heal herself in her last wish <laughs> hmm okay i like it but what if her third wish like she did make it and it was to be with limdo forever Wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, they become immortal. 
<laughs> well, like at the end, they're like, "Oh, we're together." We're like, "Oh, oh yeah!" Like, like he actually did make that wish. I mean, yeah, the ending did kind of imply that, like, oh yeah, the the real wish was that she would get to be with Lindo again, right? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, and he couldn't die yet because there was still work that he needed to do, but like she couldn't cure her TB. So I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I even if that part was something that like just became part of the legend i'm like okay yeah i'm I'm fine with that becoming part of like the myth <laughs> of uh the genbu priestess right like that that's a fitting end to it for sure mm. well i guess we can answer some of these other questions from that super snazzy um although we did answer some of them in the first podcast so we will not we'll try not to repeat uh what we already said or yeah, like, uh, you know, the next one. What do you think of the ending in general, given the happy ending Miyaka and Yui got? Like, uh, I think we we agree it's a good ending. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, and I mean, listen, we knew we knew it was coming. The, her fate was already set in stone. Uh, yeah, like, don't, don't go into Genbu thinking that Watase is going to, like, uh, magic some stuff. Like, sh- she already wrote the ending. <laughs> Just totally retcon it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think she, um, like, was like possibly like planning to like keep um Takiko alive but i think like a close friend of hers died like during the when she was writing the story oh she said in the notes that she experienced a lot of loss over the course of the the writing ah uh, yep mm-hmm. so that may have like changed her mind mm. possibly oh yeah i mean mm-hmm. i definitely get the sense reading her notes and you know, knowing that it took 10 years for this to come out because it went on various, like, minor and at least one, like, fairly lengthy hiatus due to her health and stuff like that. I definitely feel like part of the shift in the plotting, like, even though she she says in her notes, she's like, I, I knew what I wanted to happen all along and everything. Uh, but I, I feel like the shift in em- emphasis is pretty clear and probably at least partially due to those things. Uh Reading the the notes for these volumes stressed me out so bad because she <laughs> was having such a hard time. Oh, yeah. Her notes for this are just like, I am ill again. Hello. <laughs> like, Hi. My hand hurts. My hand hurts. Yeah. My dog died. <laughs> like, it's just... Oh, my God. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a little stressful reading Watase's notes. I'm just like, are you? Do you need a break? You need to mm-hmm. sit down. Yeah, and I I mean at the same time, I appreciate her honesty because a lot of manga authors' notes I feel like are not as personal as hers are. Yeah, yeah. I felt like her notes made me appreciate the story a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Like, her talking about dealing with grief, like, losing people, losing her dog, I felt like that informed the way that I viewed the grief that the characters Mm -hmm. were going through and the illnesses that the characters are going through. And I think that's really special. And that's why I really appreciated those notes that she left. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Also, I think the um, the bit with the sword in... Uh, and uh, Limdo losing him, uh, and the uh, the ceremony to send him off was very well done. I thought. Yeah. Oh, that made me cry like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you cried at multiple that was points. So okay. beautiful. Oh, yeah, I'm a crier. <laughs> <laughs> I see. You know that really got to me quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. Um. Because I think, like, in the, um, like, fantasy adventure kind of series, you're kind of, like, constrained in, like, obviously, like, how, like, in-depth you can go into, like, certain topics. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought with uh, the grief and, like, like, the stages and how they're not, like, um, like kind of very well-defined stages, it's all kind of mixed up in a sense. And I thought, like, her depiction of it was, like, it gave, like, the grief, like, enough time to like sink in and you know work mm-hmm. through it like it wasn't kind of rushed over or anything which i really appreciated that was really really good yeah that scene is very powerful yeah and i, I mean I, I, this is like the big point of genbu kaiden so i guess we could just yeah go into it here is, is like uh well there's somewhere in 
uh, the notes where she she says, you know, Watase was like, uh, each Genbu kind of, or each Fushigi story has a theme. <laughs> and, right. And uh, Suzaku was love. And Seiryu was friendship, and then Genbu was life and death. And I was like, yeah. okay, that's an escalation. <laughs> from... That's a jump. Oh, I did write that down actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll just read the the notes that I had pulled out. Yeah, directly were uh, I don't have a normal female brain, so I don't feel the need for romance in manga. Yeah, but I do want Takiko and Uruki to have a proper bittersweet love story. Even so, I really wanted to draw the action in this volume. This was volume uh, seven, I believe. Seven? Yeah, yeah, with where Soren gets to wail on a, a lot of people before he dies. <laughs> um, <laughs> romance always seems limited before the ca- uh, because the characters are so focused on each other. Um, I went out of my way to force more love scenes in the original FY uh, to fit in with the tone of shoujo comics. It worked out okay since the theme for Sasaku was love. Each of the four gods has a theme. Seiryu's theme, since Yui was the priestess, was friendship. Genbu's is life and death. Uh, and she does also say something about how she's like, I, I won't tell you what uh, Byako's yet. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Um, yeah, but then Watase also says, in a, di- in a different note, uh, over the course of the series, a lot of ill-fated characters passed away. I too cried and felt the sadness. But what I came... Uh, but what I came to a point in my life uh, when I started to actually lose people uh, close to me, my father, my grandfather, my beloved dog, friends, I began to focus not so much on the sadness, but on how they lived. Obviously, it hurts terribly to say goodbye. I cried so much. But I felt that death wasn't despair, but only a temporary uh, separation in the flow of life that continues into the future. Uh, The way you die reflects the way you live. I tried to show that in my characters. Please take a good look at how they lived. That's a really nice note. Oh, I really yeah. like that. My heart's... <laughs> I'm gonna start crying I was like, again. are you guys crying on this podcast right now? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Also, okay. I think... um, I think with the, like, death and grief, I think, like, there's a saying that, like, you, like, move on, but I think it's a bit different, like, from that, like... It's more that you kind of move forward with the memories, in a sense. Like, you bring the person with you. Yeah, I saw that being discussed somewhere. It's interesting because I haven't really faced, like, a major lot, like, a loss of someone who was a major figure in my life yet. So it feels like... And I'm not saying it's wrong. Like, from this kind of outside perspective, it it feels almost like quibbling over terminology, but like if that's like the phrasing that feels more correct to the people who have experienced that, then I think that's really important. For me, this like Genbu actually is really powerful uh, because I actually think it's very critical. Like I think in the, in the before podcast, we're like, yeah, you don't need to know the ending before going in and it's not like you do need to know the ending before going in but i do think it's actually way more powerful and fits with the theme better uh knowing that takiko dies and then because there was another there i didn't pull this one out but there was another uh you know note from watase uh where watase was like obviously people wrote to me being like please don't kill takiko (laughs) like uh (laughs) uh, we don't want to deal with uh, the sadness and everything um and watase is like no uh i i cannot do that and i i actually do get um kind of like frustrated by culture now um over how we yeah like treat death like a, in a lot of ways the ways we treat death are that it should be something that never happens anymore <laughs> you know like with the, the cult of like immortality and all of these things mm-hmm. um it's really upsetting in that way and because like kind of yeah it's it's easier if you just accept (laughs) that like i don't know it just doesn't make any sense to me you know uh and like i read a a short story pretty recently uh i was trying to do a book club with some of my friends like a a friend and his friends uh, on facebook and it was it's a short story that's supposed to be a parable about yeah how we should cure death Uh, it's about a dragon tyrant who like demands human sacrifices every day 
And it's just about him eating more and more humans every day as, as other humans live prosperously and stuff. And when I read it, I was like, oh, this, I guess, is a metaphor for like uh, capitalism or something. And then at the end, it's like, nope, this is about how death should be like <laughs> cured because look at how much sadness death brings and, and all these things. And I'm like, but the sadness comes because people don't accept that things die. <laughs> like It's just, uh, if you if you accept that, then it's it's fine. Like, <laughs> uh, but I get that it's hard because even in Genbu Kaiden, there's a lot of like, what is acceptable to die from? Uh, uh, like, we're very sad that Ta- Takiko has to be sacrificed to a god. Like, that doesn't seem just. But then she also has tuberculosis. And it's like, okay, is that, that's curable. Uh, actually, it's not curable right now. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, when you get that, that's that's pretty fatal. And it's like, okay, uh, well, it's preventable. So should she not get it? Uh, even now we're dealing with like coronavirus and it's like, nobody has to die from coronavirus, right? But like, inevitably some people will die. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, should people die from cancer? Like, it's just like, what? And then when, when you spin it off into that, it's like, okay, so nobody should die of anything except old age, like maybe, but then you still have to accept that you're going to die. And we don't accept aging very well anymore. I mean, it's, it makes me like preventable death versus just, you know, natural death. Like, I think it's normal to not want your loved ones to, die a preventable death and to try to avoid it you know oh yeah 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 for sure but then i think you know the, the lines are unclear because i think people argue that like yeah okay uh well <laughs> we can uh kind of prevent aging like we can work on preventing aging and, and all these things and i'm just like i don't know man i just <laughs> think it's good if we let ourselves go sometimes um and I am coming at this from a perspective of like earlier this year, my uncle died and he had Down syndrome. Uh, so mm. he died fairly like young for for uh, a person who didn't have Down syndrome. But for a person with Down syndrome, he actually lived to be an average age. And so I'm like, oh, that's like, I don't feel particularly like, obviously it's sad but I'm like, oh, I feel okay that he died. Like, in the end, yeah, there was suffering that was happening. Like, he had broken his hip and his back in, like, recent years and his hip right before dying. And so I was just like, yeah, yeah, you know, his, his body is failing him. Uh, but, like, he had a good life. And, yeah, so I, so I look at his life and I'm like, okay, yeah, we had fun. We, like, went to Disney World and stuff before and uh, <laughs> it was great. <laughs> and uh, so that's fine. I don't, like, feel terribly too sad about that you know <laughs> right so this book is actually a little terrifying to me because i actually do have tuberculosis oh really yes oh, i have dang. latent tb i don't know i took some some medicine it might be gone but it's not a hundred percent uh <laughs> you're like i, I don't want to be talking <laughs> yeah like and i mean there are treatments now for like the, the likelihood of it turning active is right. small you can honestly live a very like a long life with latent tuberculosis um and never like actually like have it become active but it's still just like eh. like yeah. eh, kind of it made me kind of face up to like and like nowadays there are treatments if it were to become active right like but it's it's still just like this is she has like something that I have a higher than likely higher than average de- likelihood of developing um which was yeah kind of kind of a weird thing to deal with especially since nowadays like you don't read about someone having tuberculosis and you're like that's a death that's something that I could that I could deal with you know, it feels like such a far off illness to most people. Yeah, and it definitely still is in this narrative since it's set in the 1920s. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. so I definitely made, I, I'm very squeamish, so I kind of made the mistake, yeah, of looking up tuberculosis. 
like while reading it and I was like okay I definitely feel very queasy now <laughs> looking up these stats thanks Takiko I still love you <laughs> like <laughs> um I know what you mean. I saw consumption, I think was how it was translated, at least yeah, in the yeah, version yeah. I was reading. Yeah, consumption. And um, I was like, I should look that up. And it was like tuberculosis. And I was like, um, well, you know, I'm going to preserve my mental health <laughs> and not keep doing some more research on this because I don't need it. <laughs> yeah, that probably would have been smart. I was just like, okay, yeah, I was like, I want to make sure that consumption is tuberculosis. And then it was like, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, like, why is it called consumption? And then I went down like a little Wikipedia rabbit hole. And I was like, nope, this was a mistake. <laughs> uh, uh, COVID-19. Yeah. I think they um used like in like the 19, like 20s, they used like sanatoriums, I think they were called. Mm -hmm. To treat mm -hmm. um, right, yeah. the idea was like cold, like cold, clean air could help give your body a chance to recover. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, they wanted to to send Takiko to one, <laughs> and then Takiko is like, "I'm a piece to a whole different world." <laughs> like, <laughs> bye. <laughs> also, I think the um, oh, I can't pronounce it for the life of me. Um. Kudong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, mm. Sorry. Um, the um, the emperor of Kudong, like he's desperately trying to um, ward off death with yeah. the um, Star Life Stone. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I mean, mm. that's kind of like the thing about Genbu is that like the bad people are kind of the ones that don't accept death right like uh mm -hmm. Tem Temden mm -hmm. is the one uh who's like i have been given like i got this terrible illness and you know you're supposed to feel like oh yeah that really sucks because he was so good at, at in these flashbacks and stuff like you see that he really cares about his people he like travels around is very excited to like lead them and, and try to do good things and then it's like, okay, he gets this terrible illness and that, and his brother sucks. Like, the biggest problem is that his brother sucks and manipulates his way uh, in the stuff and not really so much uh, the illness. But yeah, then, then the illness becomes like this crux. Um, and, you know, like Takiko has kind of has a choice. Uh, like, you know, the warriors are like, yeah, we don't want Takiko to be consumed by Genbu. So we're going to try so hard to not summon Genbu. Uh, but because she gets like a double death sentence, you know, she's just like, all right, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to accept this at this point. <laughs> and yeah, do the best with the time I have. Yeah, yeah. And, to, like, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just do do the best with everything that I'm, I'm given and, and all these things. But yeah, it's just like everybody who knows that they're gonna die from something just doesn't like it right like they just super don't like when they when they're like i know kind of concretely what is gonna kill me they hate it uh even though we're all like dying and it could be random it could be random like hikitsu and uh tomite die and i'm like well that that sucks more actually like their deaths sucked way more <laughs> to me you know takiko was very brave i thought um because yeah i think like most people would be like like um like fighting really hard like against that but she just um she kind of really just took it all in and yeah and that's i think a very difficult thing to do yeah i love takiko's character so much i mean there's that trope that you see in a lot of popular media where somebody's parents died just so that the plot can go someplace but i feel like <laughs> takiko's mom dying in the first volume was really important for her because her whole character arc is her like gathering all of the celestial warriors and she does that by empathizing with them and these are people who've lost so much mm -hmm. so I don't think that she would be able to empathize with these people if she hadn't herself gone through that process of grief mm, lost so, so much yeah so I think that was like the best usage that I've seen of like a character losing one of their parents. 
Yeah, for sure. And it's just like, I can see how this, uh, you know, can easily be misconstrued in a way. Like people uh, lionizing uh, people who are very ill (laughs) and all these things as like heroes and stuff. And it's very, you know, uh, sacrificing for the greater good is like, okay, uh, well, that comes with its own problems <laughs> and everything, right? But I'm like, no, Takiko's felt very, like, for lack of a better word that I can't think of, <laughs> like, realistic given the constraints of, uh, you know, the world of Shigiyugi plus the outset that, yeah, her mom had consumption and mm-hmm. uh, is contagious. <laughs> uh, uh, it's not always contagious, but, you know, yeah, sure. It would make sense that Takiko got it. Um, yeah, and I, I just keep trying to, I'm thinking of, like, uh, Weathering With You tried to be really, uh, the, the movie by uh, your name guy, you know, tried to be so bold by, like, subverting this uh, sacrificial priestess-like figure for the greater mm-hmm. good and i was just like yeah okay but the the problem with that movie for me was that it it doesn't concretely you know like deal with the consequences of what would happen based on that whereas it's like yeah takiko uh was like okay yeah for sure i can wish that everything is healed and then all these people don't have to die anymore and it's like yeah that's great <laughs> That's awesome. Plus, she solved climate change. I mean, please. Takiko, come help us. <laughs> come help us. We need a brief. The, <laughs> the a best brief. solution at the uh, the um, like farewell ceremony for um, Sword, and I think like Takiko mentions that she was able to like send off her mother as well. Yeah. Which was also super nice. Yeah. So death was the biggest topic. Um, I'm sure we might actually come back around to it, but I think there was one other question from at Snooper, Super Snazzy on Twitter that I wanted to address. Um, and it is, is there anything else you wish Genbu Kaiden covered as far as maybe war goes? Or just maybe someone you wish had more time to get to know? For me, like, lore-wise, I'm still just like, why is Seryu always evil? It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> um, but otherwise, I'm I'm never usually, like, too hung up about <clears throat> uh, world mechanics. I don't know. I'm, I'm much more in it for characters and stuff. Um... In that way, I just I just think uh, <laughs> I want to say like Hikitsu and Tomite's death felt like their deaths felt kind of cheap, but I'm also kind of like they felt like uh, prim in the Hunger Games, I guess. Mm. <laughs> which I which I increasingly am like, okay, <clears throat> I understand that it was necessary, but you know, I get why people are mad about it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah, I don't know if you all had any more Fushigi Yugi war you wish was happening <laughs> here. I think it was all like pretty well kind of like encapsulated in the end in terms of lore. Like I don't think there's anything in particular that was like really missed out on. Though I do I do wish that like we got to spend like a bit more time like this with some of the side characters. Like um uh oh jeez um Tank, like when he becomes like the like the oh, the yeah. man, <laughs> yeah, when he man yeah. version of himself, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, Tank for um, sure just uh, does not get to be a real character in this. Not really. The kind he kind of just like like becomes like one with his twin, and it's just like okay, that's, <laughs> yeah, all- that's weird. Does all the development we got for Haggis count for Tag? I mean, that's what it implied. I guess so. <laughs> yeah, because like he also like is now with uh Yeah, he's Filka. with Doka now. <laughs> They're so just they interchangeable. Sh- they share everything. <laughs> yeah, they share everything. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> <laughs> oh boy thoughts, feelings now, memories, like yeah, they're just the same person. It's fine. Like, there's a lot so that could like, be explored with him. Yeah, that's not explored. I guess, like, yay for Filka. She's still yay for like... Filka! 
I mean, her name, her real, her given name is Effin Luca. So Enfil- I mean, really is Effin Luca. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's really a yay. Uh, yeah, I also okay. Legitimately, every time I read this. I never remember what help happens with Filka, which I think means that Filka needed a little more, of something. Or more development. Yeah, I I got a feeling with quite a few of the characters where it was felt a little bit more like they were there to move the plot along than like actual characters in characters. their own right. Yeah, mm, yeah. Um, which is a bummer. Yeah. And if not that, then, like, uh, <laughs> the stuff with uh, King Temden, like, when we get to see him in the past and he literally says stuff like, for shame, and I'm just like, you are so funny. <laughs> like, you are too much. <laughs> you are too much of a good man right now, and then you become uh, just a dark, twisted soul. Like, I just can't. I just can't with you. <laughs> I also really wanted to um, learn more about Inami and, her, like, her past and all that but mm-hmm. yeah you know yeah. past mostly seems to be i was pregnant and then i miscarried and it made me sad <laughs> yeah she is much she is definitely one who where i'm <laughs> like you are a plot device like the fact that she worked in the royal palace is is there so she can give hmm, uh, you know directions in the end. yeah like. it's too bad because i love you like you know is such a cool character she sh- yeah. should have been able to do more i wanted to see like so much yeah so much more like with a character and like depth with that but it didn't happen so yeah i mean we found out she was a body bodyguard yeah that's pretty we? cool I, I think so uh she was the, uh initially a, the bodyguard like at i think the brothel before she took over for the Madam at the yeah yeah mm-hmm. it's like why couldn't we have gotten that <laughs> yeah i mean in general i feel like most of the characters don't really get too much development outside of takiko and lindo um mm. yeah and like part of that is you, yeah, I think Watase wanted to focus more on like plotting and, and building the world, and not so much the mm-hmm. inter-character relationships that really built the first Fushigi Yugi. Like, first Fushigi Yugi is way more about just like emotions and characters. characters. <laughs> yeah. Also, I think original FY was um eighteen volumes, so oh yeah, there's definitely a length difference. So like a lot yeah. more time to develop. Characters but it while, also um, had twice as many characters technically because it was doing two priestesses. Oh, true. It killed a lot more people. I think it's very funny that the, the theme of Genbu is life and death, uh, but actually a lot less people die <laughs> in Genbu. I mean, than... you know, it's it's well, well, one thing is life and death. Okay, true. Um, but you got also, me. like, you know, there's a difference between something happening a lot in a story and it being sort of the thematic, thematic center of it, right? Like, yeah. A lot of characters in Kushi Yugi died, but it wasn't about their dying. Yeah, that was just an unfortunate consequence of that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, rip. <laughs> All the ghosts came back. Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That was battle. that was a moment of emotional logic that I was actually completely okay with. <laughs> 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 it's just like it just worked really well for me. It made me cry. I was just happy to see Nitty Cool again. Yeah, yeah. That was that was like the moment that got me when like Miyaka just sort of like goes and collapses against Nariko because she's just so tired and so relieved to see them. I'm like, oh, oh, oh gosh. <laughs> we're crying again on this fight. <laughs> Logic doesn't matter. Logic doesn't matter in that scene. It's nope. just pure pure emotion fueled. Good, well, good and sad times. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, I think that that's kind of the key difference between the two series yeah is just like a original fy is all emotions 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 characters 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 uh 
plot things that don't make any damn logical sense, but we don't care because emotions. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then Gebu Kaiden is like, no. <laughs> plot. <laughs> yes. Plot, 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 plot. A little plot. Characters. Romance? <laughs> plot. <laughs> I have a, a points to my deaths now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that, that's fun. Yeah, the the only other like one miscellaneous thing that I wanted to bring up was that I did really love the side by side of Uruki's face in Volume Twelve between him transforming from Limdo into you know female Uruki, and I was like, yes, I love seeing this side by side. <laughs> same pose but the subtle differences in how you draw the <laughs> genders is so good <laughs> also um like takiko like didn't seem that like fussed over her like boyfriend like being like both like turning into a man and a woman she didn't really seem to be bothered by it which was like great i thought yeah i she know was, like right? <gasps> you're a girl <laughs> and a man <laughs> Yes. Just like, yeah, no, you're you're a dude. Sometimes you're a girl, whatever. Yeah. She was very chill about it. And I think even in, in the brothel scene, you know, they cuddle when he is presenting female and she's yeah, she's still just like, Yeah, let's cuddle. Like, you know, like I need yeah, that this. Was, that was so cute. I love yeah. that scene so much. Yeah. I definitely my one trash, trash thought reading this was that at the mm -hmm. scene where <laughs> where Limdo is like, hey, Takiko, marry me, in which he really means, oh. like, have sex with me. I was like, mm -hmm. have sex with me so that we can't summon the god. Yeah. Marriage. But I was like, technically Dude. under the the god laws, does it count if he's female? <laughs> like, if he switched? <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, I mean, technically that should count. But, like, you know. Yeah. Like, is this, are we talking, like, Sex is penetration, sort of. I'm just kind of like or... in the in the past that would have been kind of the rule, right? Like, like mm -hmm. you know. So I'm like, I think they could have got away with it. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's how I feel about that. <laughs> I like that moment of comedic relief because he was like, "You won't have to be a priestess anymore," and she's like, "Uh, no." <laughs> Thank you, but no. <laughs> Thank you for your sweet, sweet offer of your hot, hot body, but no. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, wow, Takiko, okay. <laughs> the strong woman. <laughs> um, that, seg that segue is kind of well into shipping corner. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Because, man, there are some ships that happen here that are not Takiko <laughs> and the Uruki. <laughs> um, yeah, so Dr. Oikawa just blitzes in and is like, hi. I've always sweet loved man. Takiko. <laughs> yeah. He seems like a nice boy, generally, yes. Sweet, sweet man. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Especially after having recently read the first volume of uh, Byako. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a good foster dad. He's a good foster dad to so many. <laughs> uh, he deserved happiness. So many FY characters deserve better, though. So, you know, join the club, Dr. Oika. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciated that he was like, I will still carry through getting married to you, Takiko, even though you have consumption. And she's like, no. <laughs> so <laughs> crazy crazy boy then we have filka and haggis tag i don't know <laughs> <laughs> they're just one kind of blob of people yeah like just ignore like just ignoring the whole mystical twin thing like the fact that it's like <laughs> well haggis is dead guess i'm dating tag now <laughs> Because they're the same person, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, this is the one part that really makes me be like, no, this is icky, and I don't like this. I don't like it. <laughs> it's like, they're separate people, please treat them as such. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't care that he that Tag absorbed Hayes's memories. Like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it's it's strange. It's Certainly. strange, and like, why is it here? <laughs> like, it didn't have to be. I almost wonder. I wish Watase had written notes about them. You know, Watase's always writing notes about the evil ones. Like, oh, Z, I'm so sad the Z died, probably. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me about this weird relationship you made with Filka and Tang? <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Obviously, Takiko and Limdo are the best, and I love them forever. <laughs> They're pretty good. I want them to have the straight and the gay sex because they deserve that. <laughs> <laughs> do you think Limdo died a virgin oh maybe oh that's sad <laughs> possibly oh that's tragic actually <laughs> when he deserved both of the sex <laughs> I think he like lived like a very old age too probably he probably like oh no the star life stone got turned back into water it was still probably magical star life stone water <laughs> Yeah, like it said some like he died like a hundred years into his reign, so So he was like a hundred and twenty years old. <laughs> so he lived a good long life. He lived a good long sexless, sad <laughs> life oh, separated totally from his... morning. Yeah. <laughs> like it's it's like the whole like moving forward thing. He he didn't he didn't move forward. Because like he spent his whole life devoted to like yeah, Akiko's yeah, yeah. memory instead of like moving on and falling in love again and I just I never really care for romances where it's like oh well you're like my one and only romance yeah, ever they met the person that they loved forever when they were 17 and that's it and I know like, <laughs> first love was best love yeah mm -hmm. yeah type of thing. yeah it's it's a really damaging message, honestly. Like, mm -hmm. I don't care for it. Like, like Limdo, he could have like um, like still like held like Takiko's like memory like close to him, while still like moving on to like new things for mm -hmm. himself. Um, you can create like a balance between, I think, yeah, like. Like, you've got to, like, still grow for yourself and have your own life. Mm -hmm. You can't just stay, stay, like, stuck on this, like, it's it's not healthy at all. Yeah. And not good. Very bad. <laughs> so he also basically becomes a sacrifice to Genbu and to his kingdom. Mm -hmm. He's just like, I'm just here to make it better for everybody else. Not me. <laughs> Not me, because the love of my life is dead, and because therefore, the dead, yeah. <laughs> you know, I can never be fulfilled. It's like you can love again. There's such things like a second love. You don't have to... <laughs> yeah. Like, first love is not best love. <laughs> well, it doesn't have to be your, like, like the, like, the defining one of your life. Yeah. It's frustrating. Yeah, 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 for sure. Like, I, I have this debate with Asher a lot where he's like, I don't believe in soulmates. And I'm like, no, okay. I think soulmates are real, but you can have multiple ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, so that's fine. <laughs> There's um, more than one person in the world for each of us. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, you know, there's billions of people. Like, yeah, you can get along with lots of them. But, like, you still got to, like, work a little bit to find the right ones. You know, <laughs> it's not just magical. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I agree a lot with that whole, like, idea of, yeah, like, you can still, like, honor someone's, yeah, memory. Well, like, you know, I just, yeah, I wish I hadn't gone down that route of just, like, keeping him, like, tied down to that in a sense it just mm -hmm. yeah yeah just let him move forward and be he, like his own self yeah 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 well he never got to do that because he was always manipulated by false prophecies <laughs> and then real ones and then he just tried to be a good boy. I don't know. 
yeah, I think that's that's basically Fushigi Yemukaiden, unless anybody else has anything else they want to bring up desperately. Yeah, I I think I think reading like reading this has sort of helped me to pinpoint why I do prefer what like I like Yemukaiden, but there are times where it's like I should be feeling this moment more, right? Mm. And yeah. I think a lot of that come does come from the fact that uh, so a lot of it is it's it's like the opposite problem of Fushigi Yugi original, where Fushigi Yugi original was based on like very like emotional plotting and things happen because emotions emotions demand yeah. it, and this would be the saddest thing to happen at this moment. Um, and in Genbu Kaiden, it's much more like plot forward, like this is happening because this is what will drive the plot forward. Um, you know, and it's not really super concerned with characters' motivations or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I'm glad that I was able to pinpoint it. I'm not sure if I have a larger point. Um, just yeah hopefully biako it makes me hopeful yeah for biako like can biako kind of like bridge the balance yeah exactly yeah it felt like it at points genbu was just kind of going through the motions Mm -hmm. um yeah Yeah. like you know i agree like you could feel really feel the burnout at times yeah yeah Oh yeah, for just like sure. Racing, racing towards an ending, and wanting to get it done. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. I can't wait to forget what happens in the last two or three volumes in five seconds again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come back to it and be like, "What's Bill gonna do again?" Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's that's my overarching impression. Oh, I did. I did want to mention. I don't think I brought this up last time, even though I did have it as a note. Uh, that actually, according to my podcast hosting platform, Simplecast, the first Fushigi Yugi episode is the most listened to episode. Not taking into account, you know, like YouTube or any other tracking stuff that's <laughs> separate. Yeah. So, so I I do hope that people enjoy the Genbu ones, and you know, someday. 12 years from now <laughs> Bianco <laughs> ones <laughs> man I'm gonna be lettering that forever <laughs> yeah oh yeah Sarah you, you're this... <laughs> you're destined <laughs> Genbu Kaiden had a two year hiatus so hopefully I'm lucky enough to only have a two year hiatus I mean isn't it already approaching that <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> she started Arata back up again yeah, I know. She picked Arata back up again. I was like, come on. <laughs> I mean, I don't me. know how much choice she had. Ugh. Um, But it's like, yeah, it's like, come on. Come on. <laughs> come on. In one of her notes, she was like, yeah, I have to have three series going at once. <laughs> and I was like, no. No, you don't. Please take care of yourself. And, like, Arata yeah. was the series that, like, really, like, burned her out, right? Like, yeah. That was the one with the terrible editor who yes. treated yeah. her like garbage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I read about that. Ooh. And it's already 24 volumes long. Like, she... uh, so it's taken a lot of time. And, yeah, like, even in the notes for that, I'm pretty sure she tells you about her terrible editor, not like, in so many words i guess but yeah (laughs) there's a lot of notes in it that are like my editor wanted me to do this in this scene so i had to redraw the whole damn thing and you're like oh my (laughs) god i haven't really read arata it's i haven't read it in a while that's so funny it's in the note though (laughs) i feel like not a lot of people like arata so it's definitely not my favorite (laughs) work I've read all of it. it. It has a lot going on. And it's definitely like, okay. You can see... Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's just in some hellscape between Shonen and Shoujo. <laughs> it's not, 
not really working out too too well. But I would like oh. to see an ending. I wonder if she was really excited because she always said she wanted to write Shonen. I know. That's why it's so sad. <laughs> it's so sad that when she finally got to do it, it was like, oh, and then my editor's treating me like trash. You know? <laughs> oh, you oh, Yuatase. I hope you're happier now. I know. So I hope that you Yuatase, like, I want Arata to be finished, but I'm just like, no, Viaka. <laughs> do Viaka. <laughs> That's way more important legacy wise. <laughs> oh. But anyway. Well, hopefully it'll not take ten years for her to finish this series. I like don't she did know. for Gembu Kaiden. I'm just saying Biako's already been on hiatus since twenty eighteen, I'm pretty sure. So it's, it's already been two years. Um oh. Yeah, I know. It's rough. But maybe someday, I'll, yeah, I can't, I can't end this podcast until all of Biako <laughs> comes out. <laughs> like it's gonna be like forty years from now, and no, you'll be like, God. finally, I can rest. Finally, I can stop talking about Shimaki. <laughs> and be like, yes, I'm sixty. I just this is not for me anymore. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, thanks for listening to Show Do and Tell. Comments, questions, constructive criticism, concerns. Need to gush about your OTP? Email showdoandtell at gmail.com or leave a comment on the episode's YouTube page. We're at Show and Tell on Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. Caitlin, where can people find you and your work on the internet? Uh, you can find most of my stuff on animenewsnetwork.com. Nope, wrong one. You can find most <laughs> of my stuff on animefeminist.com. Uh, as well as a growing number of reviews on AnimeNewsNetwork.com. Um, and if you want to dig back into the my older stuff, you can also find me on HeroinProblem.com, Heroin with an E. I'm just assuming we can find you anywhere that begins with anime something. <laughs> as long as it's not like an alt-right site. It's not okay, a yeah. terrible guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, that's good. Um, Sarah, where can people find you and your work on the internet? You can find my website, which is sarah.pizza. And you can also find me on Twitter. Twitter. And Zara. Uh, I am still new to like, like, pretty much a fourth on the internet like the adult world so i guess just like twitter for now so yeah i'm so sorry <laughs> the internet is terrible <laughs> anyway that's how i feel about that are you excited every time you see a new episode from us if so please consider leaving a rating on apple podcasts this will help the podcast reach more hearts or at least ears Thanks again for listening. We'll be back next time for I don't know. Or just we're going on a little break after I release these two episodes. There will be a little hiatus where I will still be recording. Uh, I just won't be releasing episodes because I will hopefully have actually closed on a house and be attempting to move my things into it and retrieve Asher from the hellscape that is Florida. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The next recording is going to be about after school nightmares, so that will probably come out in two to three months. Until then, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, what? we did it. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Until then, bye? Bye? Question? I don't know. Bye. <laughs>